I am a last year PhD student in Czech University of Life Sciences in Prague. So, and I'm working with the remote sensing and the interaction with the particle and uh, the whispers. So, and um, general uh, explanation of the presentation is my uh, two papers that I'm finishing right now. So, and it's generally called vegetation index monitoring uh, uh, with plant imagery. So, we all know that uh, the Biggest problem. Uh, European forests are uh, barbital uh, you, uh, and uh, interaction with the Norway spruce. So you know that this guy make galleries and make the forest feel bad. And um, we actually need the remote sensing for it help us to identify different phases of the barbital uh, attack spreading and uh, help us to uh, not. Uh, allow it to spread so quickly and for us it's challenging that uh, we cannot see by our human eyes the green attack phase the initial start of it and uh, one good thing is uh, we have some satellite imager which have at least one uh, near infrared bar plus RGB so it allow us to calculate vegetation indices so uh, it help us uh, in monitoring so, you know, this, I think, uh, very nice picture of the phases. So we get all the green attack when we don't see the changes in color of canopy. Then it turns red attack in the gray attack. So uh, the concept of our paper was uh, to uh, really a bit ambitious that the normal green attack monitoring is to uh, uh, first, es uh, estimate the imagery of the large area uh, to see the stress uh, and then assess the predisposition of the green attack, like to find the areas of forests on the landscape level, right? not on the tree level, but on the landscape level, to see maybe that some areas uh, have a predisposition for the barbital attack and then to define their characteristics. So, and for that we have two hypotheses. So, uh, we want to track the significant differences in vegetation indices to, uh, with healthy forests and forests which are uh, early stage of the attack. And then uh, the second one is that before the attack, before the green attack phase, on the predisposition phase. So, let's go to the area. So, uh, our areas was really close by Prague in Czech Republic. So it's school and enterprise uh, which our university owns and manage. And the green circle is the area of the most concentration of the area of the uh, this school forest enterprise and it's about uh, 31.5 thousand hectares. So our research area was really uh, focus on the larger landscape than a mm -hmm. single tree stand or like a small stand. And we had inventory layer which helped us a lot to define the age structure, uh, tree species structure, and uh, we use planet imagery. So you can see there, so I will talk a bit later about that. So this is how it looks like, it's three or three meters. Uh, planet and uh, for us it was a little bit problem. So our age, uh, sorry, year of focus was 2020, and they were limited with the four bands. So uh, we played with the four bands, and here you can see the uh, areas which we defined as control data set and data dataset. I will uh, zoom in in the next slide. So and vegetation indices, so we use a lot of them, so 24 actually, and this is kind of example of how it does look like for this area. And now <laughs> the workflow. So it was not uh, very much easy to get, but it's not complicated at all. So as an input data, we have just two sources. One is remote sensing data, it's kind of easy. We had a planet, four bands, and we had 22 time series images started from the uh, April and finishing in the end of September. So we're covering the vegetation season and we got uh, very nice GIS data uh, as an inventory layer where we can find the characteristics of the uh, 
compartments of the first mentioned units, and also we uh, created app uh, with the uh, RGS collector. It's a simple app where you can uh, track and put the geopositions of the hotspots, and we installed this app to foresters which are managing this area and they're all the researchers in our project which uh, they can easily when they are in the side of vegetation season so we they uh, visiting these areas often and they can track uh, an early st stage of the attack when they see new trees and define the dates the numbers of trees and it can monitor it in progress, so how does it look like when they uh, find them, when the cutting was happened, and this stuff. Then the GIS data uh, is uh, splitting into two of the data sets, the attack data set and control data set. So uh, we are trying to adjust the control data set based on the same age and species structure, so it's kind of uh, 100% uh, coniferous, uh, spruce forests, and attack areas we define them and clean them and shape them. On, I will show on the next slide. So, but for remote sensing, we have done some uh, trick that uh, called stacked. So we stack them uh, and we stack vegetation indices as one band. So we made some kind of cube from that. So we have 24 indices and itself four bands. And then uh, we get some statistics from that and the aims that I took before. So it was uh, to analyze the pre-attack phase, then the green attack phase, and then uh, our goal for next paper maybe is to predict the hotspots for the next uh, seasons. So and this is our toolkit. So we have used mostly QGIS and Orpheo toolbox. It's a kind of nice thing. Um, a little bit about the data collection. So we created the simple app, it's really simple, so if you got RJS license, you can uh, uh, have uh, RJS online and RJS collector for the cell phone, so you can uh, go inside the forest and uh, geo, uh, get the geoposition of any points which you want. So for us, the main goal was to track the early stages of the uh, barbital attack and uh, foresters, uh, they have areas which they are uh, making expect, uh, inspections uh, on a weekly basis and as well we have around maybe 20, 30 researchers that have their areas of interest where they are making experiments and they can be there really more often than weekly basis, like maybe daily, it depends. And they all have the cell phone, and if they see the fresh one, so they can easily as, as just map it and set the current date, numbers of uh, attack trees, that's it. So, and uh, the type of the bar beetle, but for us it was 99.5% is uh, typographic. So, and we have the interface on the cell phone, on the uh, desktop application, like in web or inside the RGIS. So, he has uh, defined the plots where the most intensive researchers uh, were uh, focused on and other areas were uh, mainly uh, led by uh, uh, foresters. So, and it's color coded with the percentage of the spruce, so it's kind of from 80, from 100%, let's say, to 90%. Uh, and you see the different stages, like green one is kind of uh, uh, that harvested was done, uh, yellow one is harvesting in progress, and red one is not uh, harvested. So, and one good thing as well for this area is was uh, like any of harvesting is what is happening there is always connected with the bar beetle uh, attack. So we don't, uh, could, we can be confused by the fresh cutting uh, for uh, really management for purpose for uh, for selling some uh, for processing wood. So their goal is to remove the attacked for uh, attacked uh, logs from uh, from the uh, forest as fast as possible, and they don't produce uh, what logs or something. So yes, so this is uh, our application on the zoom out uh, on the broader scale 
So this is kind of the main area of the researchers and others is uh, covered by the foresters. So we can, as you can see, the intensity is pretty relevant for both of the uh, cases. So we got this graph, which is shows how uh, many identified points were uh, during starting from the end of April and finishing the early in November. So it uh, doesn't tell us much about, but we can see that uh, the data comes to us really in a concise way. So it's kind of nice. And uh, there are kind of wa uh, waves over, we can see, yeah, some kind of waves of the Barbados uh, attack. So, and uh, how we can filter this uh, input data? So, firstly, we decided to create a predisposition data set, which is based on this GPS data. And then we put these points on the uh, raster layer, so, and we can easily track uh, the end of the season, where we can, if the point uh, drops inside the visually seen cutting, so we see that like, yes, this data is valid, so we kind of visually validated that. Then we, not to be biased by the edge of the, the contour of the cutting, so we apply T-means clustering, so we can see uh, that the borders of the area which was affected by the barbital was kind of based on the pixel. But the, and we did done the vectorization of it, and uh, it's always happened. It's kind of um, happened um, a lot where we can see that freshly attacked uh, areas during the season was connected with the previous year's cutting, like from bare soils, so-called forest edge. We have open forest edge, and we have bare soils from the last year, but it defines it as a cutting itself, so, but uh, we needed to manually cut down the uh, last year cutting from the uh, defining bare soils, polygons of the attack plots. So, and for that, uh, so we had 61 sample areas. So this is not 61 trees, this is area. Um, and for the uh, control data set, we tried to emulate the predisposition data set so we uh, had the uh, forest inventory data and we filtered them by the percentage of spruce lights from 80 to 100% and the age structure was from 78 years to 130 years age. And we dropped some random points and uh, made a circle buffer based on the average area of the uh, predisposition areas which were cut down. So, and we're trying to achieve the same sample size. This is uh, more details about the, uh, how does it look like. So on the left side, you can see that uh, this is predisposition area, how it looked like. So it's all on the edges. You can see it's uh, kind of nicely uh, shows uh, the borders uh, based on uh, some uh, pixels. And we see like kind of this line, which uh, defines the edge of the previous year cutting. And here you can see uh, the zoom out version of the random uh, control areas uh, where they are in right compartment and they fit inside it and uh, very uh, and the area is pretty the same. So. Then we came to the data cleaning. So for the control data set, we are safe. So we just created it synthetically. So it's fine. We don't need to clean it up. Uh, so, but for the predisposition data set, we firstly, as I told before, uh, so we removed the cuttings nearby. Um, and uh, we defined that we have uh, lots of samples, but some of them are uh, moving from the phase where they are in predisposition phase. When they, they in the middle of the season, they have somewhere attack on the time frame, and then it uh, goes to the different class called green attack, and we remove it from the current research. And then uh, we exclude some samples, like uh, we have one cloudy day, so we excluded one cloudy day, and we on the last days of the 
research, we have some very small sample size, and we decided to ex exclude it. So uh, we have uh, 15 time series, and then our uh, year of the focus was 2020, and we started from April, finished in uh, September. Uh, yeah, actually it was 22 images, but in the previous position phase we used only 50. And this planet scope product and 100% um, coverage, 0% uh, cloud cover, sur surface reflectance, uh, harmonized to Sentinel, uh, five, uh, sorry, four bands, RR, RGB near infrared, plus three on three meters resolution. So, and uh, the indices which we use, so this is the full list of it. That is the, you all of them know Know it, so it's not really something fancy because we have only four bands, so we are limited. Then we acquired statistics, so we tried to calculate indices. Then our data, JS data, was clean, and, uh, and um, then we uh, at the end of the combination of the um, remote sensing data, so we had stacked. Uh, 28 bands, so it's four actual bands and then uh, vegetation air uh, as a cube. So we acquired zonal statistics, uh, export them in CSV, uh, then process the Python journal box. So, and so firstly, what we wanted, so as uh, that plan was really ambitious, like to see some hope and uh, to plot them. And uh, you can see here the plot, so healthy trees are marked green and will be attacked or predisposed uh, is marked red, so, and we want to try to see the differences in mean and standard error. And here's the plot of the every one of the indices which we found that is very useful. Uh, yeah, so we, we found the hope and we started to research and we were focused on the two things like first one is a t-test and uh, we see some promise there and as well we use the linear discriminant analysis with the one of classification accuracy and uh, we consider as significant successful uh, for our research is where they are both matched so uh, we found two indices on the, not on all the time series, but on the particular dates. And we found out that the early end index and vary uh, the most uh, successful with the finding uh, differences on uh, time series images for particular days. Uh, so, and uh, a little bit about the next paper that we are doing. So we started with the most ambitious phase, like find the previous position, and now we are uh, assessing the second part of the data set, which uh, turned from previous position to actual green attack. So uh, next paper will be about the green attack phase. And we also see that on the plot, we can see, uh, uh, we find out actually that the a only AWE works on that to find the significance and um, purple line here is kind of what which we were assessed before, so it is predisposition pre phase, and then we are assessing the red line, it's green attack phase, and uh, we see that um, somewhere in the end of June, they differ uh, a bit, so this is uh, actually the results, and as well vary on one or two days, they find they were found to be significant um, as well. So, in conclusion, so we find out that uh, we can see the difference even before the attack uh, with the, our initial data, and but we had limitation with the four bands for 2020, and uh, that's why we only calculated broadband vegetation indices. And, um, I thought it would be nice in the future to use a band planet products and maybe uh, to simplify the process of coding Python, so create some kind of library to make a cal uh, calculation faster, uh, make some kind of library, and then it could be nice when 
we apply it in the real practice in force management so we can make some kind of API to test it. Uh, some area of focus uh, before the season and see some kind of hotspots on the heat map where the indices behave uh, kind of off the trend of the uh, uh, average of the uh, spruce tents uh, as they behave in normal ones. So they will find these dif uh, differences and it could be coded in the API. So actually that's it from my side, so thank you for your attention and